عمرك قال عمري ستون سنة فقال فضيل ومنذ ستين سنة وأنت تصير إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى ربما أو توشك أن تصل فقال رجل إن لله وإن إليه راجعون فقال فضيل أتعلم ما معنى هذا قال بلى أعلم أني عبد لله سبحانه وتعالى وإليه راجع فقال فضيل إذا أنت تعلم أنك عبد لله سبحانه وتعالى وإليه راجع ألا تعلم أنك موقوف بين يدي الله سبحانه وتعالى فإذا علم أنه موقوف بين يدي الله فليعلم أنه مسؤول فإذا علم أنه مسؤول فليعد لكل سؤال جوابا فبكى الرجل بكاء شديدا فقال وما الحيلة قال الحيلة يسيرة جدا فقال وما هي يا رحمك الله قال تحسن فيما بقى يغفر الله ما قد مضى وما بقى وإذا لم تحسن فيما بقى أخذت فيما مضى وما بقى فضيل بن إياد he met a man and he asked him how old are you the man said I'm 60 years old فضيل said during this 60 year period you have been on a sojourn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as every day passes you get closer and closer to your death. As Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Ya ibn Adam, innama anta ayyam, idha dhahaba yawmum, dhahaba ba'aduk. O son of Adam, you are nothing more than mere numbered days. And every time a day goes by, part of you is gone. You can never get that back. He says, so for the past 60 years, you have been on a journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and perhaps you are about to reach your destination. Once you hit 60 years old, how much of your life is actually left? I mean, from the womb, how much time do you actually have? But I mean, if you made it to 60 years old, how much of your life is really left? Allahu a'lam, you don't have another 60. You don't have, you may not even have another 50. 30 years, between 20 and 30 years tops. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. But he said, perhaps you are going to reach your destination. So the man said, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. To Allah we belong and to Allah we shall return. Fulayl asked him, do you even know what that means? He said, yeah, I know what it means. He said, it means that I'm a servant of Allah and I'm going to return to Allah. Fudayl said that if a person knows that he is nothing more than a servant of Allah, then he has to know that he is going to stand before Allah. Mokuf, you're going to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everybody, everybody that is a servant will stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, وَكُلُّهُمْ آتِيهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَرْدًا and every single one of them will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala individually by yourself to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, and if you know that you're going to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you have to know that you are going to be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, فَوَرَبِّ لَنَسْأَلَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ أَمَّا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And by your Lord, we will ask them, every single one of them, about what they used to do. You will be asked everything that you did. Why did you do this? Why did you go here? And the Prophet وسلم, he said, Man faqad halak. That whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins to open up your record of deeds and begins to debate with you about everything that you did, then know that you are going to be destroyed. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala excuses you, 
Don't worry about it. It allows you to go into paradise. Then consider yourself blessed. But when your scales are open, your book, your record is open, and Allah begins to question you about everything, then know that your chances of being destroyed are very likely. He says, so if you're going to stand before Allah, then know that you are going to be questioned. And if you know you want to be questioned, then prepare for every question a response. Prepare a response. When Allah asks you, why did you do that instead of doing that? When I gave you money, why didn't you give sadaqah instead of going to do this? When I blessed you with aql, with your intellect, why did you choose to use your brain to do this instead of to do that? When I blessed you with the faculties that I gave you of hearing and seeing to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you use those faculties for other than that. When I blessed you with a beautiful voice, why didn't you recite the Quran, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, instead of learning how to sing? Why, why did you utilize your fingers to play musical instruments when you could have utilized those fingers to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Even our body parts are going to testify against us, Yom al -Qiyama. We will debate with our body parts, Yom al -Qiyama. So he said that you're going to stand before Allah, and you're going to be questioned and prepare for every question or response. The man started to cry. And he said, what is the way out of this situation? And Fulayl said, it's very simple, very easy. He said, well, tell me, may Allah have mercy on you. He said, be good in what is left of your life and Allah will forgive you for what has passed of your life and what remains of your life. He said, but if you fail to do good in what is left of your life, then you will be accountable for what has passed of your life and what remains of your life. What is left of your life from this point forward, from this moment, very moment, to the end of your life, tuhsan. Do good, and Allah will pardon you and forgive you for what has passed of your life and what remains of your life. But if you fail to do good in what is left of your life, you will be accountable for what has passed and what remains. And this is consistent with the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, that the one who makes tawbah from sin, he will be forgiven for all of the sins. But if he returns back to the same sin after making tawbah, he will be accountable for the sin that he committed before and the current sin. This is the danger of tawbah. And why one of the conditions of repentance is that you never go back to committing the sin again. There are three conditions of tawbah. One is that you stop committing the sin. Number two is that you feel bad, you feel remorseful about the sin. The Prophet ﷺ said, Anadama tawbah. Remorse is the essence of repentance. To feel bad. If you don't feel bad about it, then you have not made tawbah. And number three is to make a sound resolve, sound intention, never to go back and commit the sin again. But if you go back and commit the sin again, the scholars, they say that this is tala'ub. This is playing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you say, I make tawbah, and then you go back and you do it again. Then you have not repented. This is tala'ub, this is plain with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu ta'ala a'alam wa sallallahu ala nabi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa salama tasneem al-kathira wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.